Habari, Komasava, and hello from everyone that is watching. You are very welcome. We are live from Uganda. My name is Sharon Chomjisha Senyonga. I'm Simon Senyonga. Now, to everyone that is tuned in and watching for the very first time, a warm welcome to these new prophetic series mm -hmm. with Prophet Elvis Monia, where we're going to be updated on so many things where the Church of God is supposed to be and what today is all about. Today is a launch of something new. Now, it is for you to attune yourself to also understand that you are receiving something from Prophet Elvis Monia. a prophet that preserves, prospers, and enlarges. Welcome once again to all those that are watching us from different countries, from France, from Rwanda, from so many more countries. Thank you so much for watching and you're about to be blessed. I want to take this very special opportunity to welcome the men and women of board, the politicians, the society icons. Thank you so much for being a part of this very, very unique broadcast with Prophet Elvis Mboni. Now remember, what made the sons of Issachar unique from the rest of the children of Israel was that they understood the times and the seasons. Now in this broadcast, we get to understand where are we in God's prophetic timing? How are we supposed to be positioned? What are we supposed to be doing? How are we supposed to be seeing things? Now, that is why you're going to spread this message. Don't forget to share the hashtag, which is hashtag Prophet, Prophet Elvis Mboni on all the different social media platforms. Make sure that you're inviting somebody to be a part of this broadcast. Yes, now it is so beautiful for you to also remember that like Prophet Elvis Mboni highlighted on Saturday that we should be able to attune ourselves and know that we are receiving something new. Now, it is also not something that is usually done by Prophet Elvis Mboni. So when something is happening for the very first time, it is for all of us to be attentive. and understand that indeed the Lord is speaking but is launching us into a new place. And this actually points us to the reality of this year. The year of the overcomers and the Lord comes and launches us into this very special season mm -hmm. of understanding God's prophetic, prophetic timing. In the book of Amos it says, how can two walk together lest yeah. they agree? So we are here to agree with the heavens. That's Amos 3.3. Mm -hmm. Can two walk together except they, they be agreed? So we're here to move with heaven, where heaven is, to understand the times and the seasons. Now, the place. men and women of God that are watching you are very welcome. And it is with gratitude and honor that indeed we're going to get prepared and welcome Prophet Elvis Mboni at this very moment as he comes to minister to us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Now today I would have you uh, pay very close attention to uh, the words that the Lord has given to me. And uh, not only pay, pay close attention to the words that the Lord has, has given to me, but also the spirit of those words. You see, uh, it's It's important to hear the words that are being spoken. But uh, you see, if you're not in touch with the spirit of those words, it's also uh, very easy uh, to run away with your own interpretation of, of, of those words. And this, happen, uh, this happens actually uh, several times. So, and that's why the spirit of God said in the scriptures, he said that uh, uh, the error He said they error, not knowing uh, the scriptures, nor the spirit of God. Eh? He said you error, not knowing the scriptures, uh, not the spirit of God. Now in other words, you error, not knowing the word, nor the spirit of God. Now this is exactly what I'm telling you, that uh, it's so important, extremely important, uh, to be in touch, not only with the words that are being spoken, but also with the spirit of of those words because you see again if you just hear the words and you're not in touch with the spirit of those words it is so easy it's extremely it's 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 very easy to run away with your own interpretation of uh, of, of what those words actually mean you'll make up what those words actually mean if you're not in touch Uh, with the spirit of those words. And that's why Jesus at some point, uh, you remember when he was speaking to the Pharisees, uh, he told them that uh, search the scriptures. Then he says, uh, for you know that in them you have eternal life. Then he said, not knowing that they testify of me. Now he, has, he was speaking to the Pharisees who uh, all through their lifetime, all through their study and their uh, religious practices actually searched the scriptures. But when the spirit of those scriptures 
what we call the presence of those scriptures. You see, when we, when we talk about the presence of God, we're actually talking about the spirit, the manifest spirit of God. What? The very essence of God in manifestation. So when the very spirit of those words, the very presence of those words was face to face with them, they erred. They couldn't recognize uh, 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 the word, the scriptures which they had apparently uh, not only recited over and over again, but uh, apparently believed because they were not in touch with the presence of the word. You get it? With the spirit of the word. It's very, 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 very uh, critical. It's very crucial that uh, you not only hear uh, words that are being communicated to you, but that you are in touch also with the spirit of those words. Especially, uh, you know, if you've been conditioned uh, uh, otherwise. Eh? Because you see, uh, it's, it's, it's actually the conditioning uh, uh, that, that matters most. Eh? Uh, the, if you've been conditioned closer and closer and closer to God, you will very easily flow along with him. Now, in other words, when he says something, you will know exactly what he's saying. But if you've been programmed or conditioned away from him, and you see, you see there are very many things that condition us or program us away from God, and uh, we don't even realize this. But there are so many things that uh, uh, condition us and program us away from God without realizing it. Many times those things may be uh, you know, uh, religious, they may be political, they may be, you know, as petty as tribal, as, uh, you know, things like that, things that you go through. So uh, you become so conditioned away from uh, actually uh, your spirit or your life being, uh, in essence, uh, purely having the sense of, of, of purity as far as God is concerned. So when God is speaking to you, he comes across, his word comes across uh, a barrier of uh, a religious bias or, you know, uh, an experiential bias. Let's say God tells you uh, uh, he bore your diseases and he took your sicknesses, by his stripes you are healed. But then through experience, uh, for some reason, you have not yet appropriated the divine healing of God. Eh? So when he tells you that, that word will not, uh, uh, your experience will be a barrier to the revelation of God, and then uh, you'll, it, will, it will not really uh, be imbibed properly in the way in which uh, it should purely be. And that is why many times when the Spirit of God is dealing with us, if the Spirit of God would have us uh, be used uh, to the degree to which he wants us to use us, he will have to, uh, if I may coin that word, uncondition us and program us away from ourselves. And he will, uh, you'll find that there are so many things and so many layers that will be taken out from us for him to be able to speak to us his word and us to know exactly and purely what he is talking about. Eh? And so he will, he, will, he will do this. And if, if that is not in effect, you'll find that he cannot use us to the extent to which he would have us use us. He would want to use us. And that is why when you read our second, I believe it's, it's second Timothy chapter 2, uh, verse 20, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20, uh, chapter 2, verse 20, he says, But in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold, uh, but also of wood and of earth, and some to dishonor, and, and some, some to honor, and some to dishonor. I'll read that again. Eh? It says, In a great house. Now, you know that the church of the Lord Jesus Christ is the house of the Lord, eh? and it's a great house. Eh? So he says, in a house as great as his, in a great house, this great house, he says, they are not only vessels of gold. Now, in other words, the people you come across, eh? you'll come across vessels of gold, you know, and by the gold typifies now a pure conditioning, something that is at the top, at the top end of things. Eh? He says, but in a great house, they are not only those who are totally, you know, pure, Condition, uh, condition purely. And when I talk about uh, 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 con uh, purity, I'm not referring to uh, weaknesses and failures and strength. I'm talking about your heart uh, positioned in a way in which uh, when God speaks, you will be like Mary, be it unto me 
according to their word. Now, when God speaks, in other words, what you capture is the very essence of what he's talking about, the very presence of what he's talking about, the very spirit of what he's talking about. When he speaks something, you don't allow what you, you know, it's, it's not clouded by uh, a lot that you have heard and a lot that you are, uh, you know, that has, has really been, uh, 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 has, has conditioned you, but you hear it as it is. Eh? And uh, uh, that's why he, he talks about, that's why we're referring to the purity of that house eh? uh, being gold. Eh? He says, in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold. Hmm? When God is dealing with, uh, uh, with his people in this great house, he says, he will come across not only vessels of gold and of silver, but there will also be those of wood, and of earth, <laughs> now those, in other words, who have really, really, really been conditioned earthward, eh? earth-like, eh? and some, some will honor, and some will dishonor. Why? These are all belong to the great house, but because of the conditioning, he said, uh, uh, some will actually bring honor, and some dishonor. Why? Do you know that you can actually take, uh, 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 there can actually be a vessel that when it carries, uh, when it is given the truth of God, it will actually uh, dishonor that truth and the, the truth of God will come out in a, a dishonorable way. You know, this has happened through the centuries. Uh, <laughs> there, was a, there was a period of time known as the Inquisition where uh, Christians were apparently so zealous that uh, they actually uh, were referred to as the Crusaders. So wherever they went, uh, they went to convert people with a sword. If you did not believe, eh, <laughs> you were speared eh, to death. Eh? So they would uh, literally, you know, hold you, you know, uh, almost at gunpoint, so to say. Uh, Do you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Savior? If you say no, you're dead. You see? Eh? So the vessel had been, uh, was really a vessel of, of, of earth. They had received the word. But because that word had been conditioned according or clouded according to uh, the way they had been programmed, they were religious but not spiritual. And because of that, they were vessels of dishonor. Now that will happen also as well to this day and age. And that's why the Spirit of God is uh, uh, extremely uh, focusing on our conditioning, especially now. Because what you're going to hear today is something that, should, uh, that you should receive with the purity with which it should be received if it is going to be effective. You don't just carry it around and then play around it casually. You know, the days of, 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 casual, of casually handling the word of God, casually ha handling the prophetic word uh, are way past us, eh, are, are behind us. Eh? Now, because of what, uh, has been what we've been commissioned with, what is at stake, uh, the word of God is so precious, it is so valuable, we ought to treat it that way. We ought to make sure that when we hear the prophetic word, we understand it, we decipher it, we literally, we literally receive of the impression of it. Eh? Uh, it impresses upon us what it has intended or what it intends to impress upon us and then it can uh, condition us according to the will of God and the mind of God and then we can be expressions of his word. Eh? We can be that word that became flesh. Eh? if we receive it that way. Very, very, very important. Again, he says, in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth. And he says, and some to honor and some to dishonor. Eh? So you're not going to be that that receives the word to dishonor. Eh? Uh, you're going to receive that word and you're going to receive it with reverence and with power, and then it will come forth in manifestation with, uh, uh, with such greatness eh, to honor uh, what God has placed in you. Eh? Verse 21 says, uh, if a man therefore, you notice that uh, this is so important, eh? it says, if a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor. Now, there are those listening to me who merely carry the prophetic and ooh, you run around with it like babes. The scripture says, if you purge yourself from this, it says, you shall be a vessel 
and to honor. Eh? So now today is your day uh, where uh, that word will begin now dawning upon you uh, with such greatness and you will receive it uh, in the way in which it ought to be received. Not casually. This word is so powerful. The things and the revelations that the Spirit of God has been uh, uh, showing to me and uh, where he would have us, where he wants to take us. We've got to be so keen, more keen than we've ever been in the past to follow him, to pursue him as he intends to, for us to follow him and to pursue him. We, that we may not be distracted and, and misunderstand what, what, what he's telling us. Eh? So he says, if a man therefore shall purge himself from this, he shall be a vessel unto honor. Now in other words, you cannot be uh, perpetually a, a vessel unto dishonor. Eh? Uh, there is a way you can, uncon you can be unconditioned and programmed away uh, from that vessel that has been known as a vessel unto dishonor. Eh? Uh, if a man therefore purge himself of this, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, set apart, and meet already for the master's use. You see, this is what I was telling you about. That uh, until we begin to receive the word with purity, when our hearts have been purged or purified from the conditioning that was making us uh, not see the revelation of God as it ought to be seen, not feel it as it ought to be felt, and not be driven as it ought to be driven, he says, if we are purged away or purified away from that, we are ready for the master's use. So you see that this, what, the importance of this is, uh, uh, you know, this is where our, uh, the extent of our use or our employment before God hinges upon eh, or hangs upon. You see, many people want to be employed by God. Eh, and he says that, uh, uh, you know, there's one credential to be employed by God, and that is being purged or purified away from the conditioning that would make you not see him clearly. Eh? You see, one of, my, one of the greatest, uh, actually not one of the greatest, the greatest worship song, eh, uh, uh, as far as I'm concerned, that has always been my, uh, uh, my, my, my best song, has been a, a song by uh, 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 a gentleman called Eugene Greco, uh, called Purify My Heart. Eh? And it has nothing to do again with, uh, oh, you know, purify my heart, I'm suffering, I'm sinning. No, it's, it has nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with conditioning. And you'll get to know what, what that is. Eh? Uh, because you see, uh, w some people, uh, when they hear of purifying my heart, they think of mo morality and behavior. It has nothing. You can be morally upright, very morally upright as far as the world is concerned, and yet one of the hardest, uh, you, you have one of the hardest hearts eh? as far as God is concerned. God cannot communicate to you, you see. Uh, wh whenever he tries to communicate to you, you're looking at this and that and that. You're really, uh, uh, you, you, you're, you have all these biases, religious biases and, and prejudices and political biases and prejudices. And so God cannot really, really uh, um, have, uh, like use you, employ you. Again, this is very important. I want you to understand uh, verse 21. You see, why is the Spirit of God showing us this? Because God has a lot, a lot. He has a lot uh, to give us to do. There's a lot that God wants us to do. He wants to employ us. You know, there's a lot of vacancies, you know, in the kingdom. Now, and that is why uh, many times we come to a place and then, we, you know, we almost like, cannot go beyond that place eh? because we have not learned, you know, how to, uh, uh, you know, uh, have God use us. Eh? He says, if a man, therefore, purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified, set apart, and ready or meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. You see what is at stake, you know? ready for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. Every good work. This is a, this is the great works, good works that, is, that, are, you know, that are in store as far as God is concerned and as far as you are concerned eh, uh, in, in, in him. Eh, uh, 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 there's a lot of good work that you are meant to do, that he wants you to do. But you see, the thing is, 
you've got to get to that place where he can use you. You're set apart, sanctified. He doesn't speak to you and you interpret things the way you want to interpret them. And you make them uh, appear the way you want them to appear. You know, taking the, the word and then you, you, know, you force it to mean something else. Eh? Uh, that is, uh, uh, you, you will uh, stifle uh, the Spirit of God from operating, not only in you, but also through you. Eh? Uh, so, we go to verse 22. Verse 22 says, Flee also youthful lust, but follow after righteousness, faith, charity, peace, uh, with them that call on the, on the Lord out of a pure heart. Eh? So it's here uh, basically talking about again that purity of heart. Now, this is what the Lord, uh, uh, um, this is how he's setting the stage to get us be used eh? in this day and age. Because again, there's great work that is in store great work that is in store and there's going to be a lot of people uh, that are going to be uh, uh, um, called but for them to be chosen for the master's use you know you've got to again to be conditioned rightly you've got to be conditioned rightly for you to be chosen of God no biases no prejudices no preconditioning eh? so that when God speaks something uh, you know your self biases just come in the way and say, oh, you know, uh, but God, you see, you see this. Eh? Let me give you an example. In 2013, uh, there's a prophecy that came to me in the year 2013. Eh? And, uh, uh, and I'm glad it came to me back then in 2013. Eh? And it was a prophecy, you remember, uh, about uh, the, uh, the election of uh, Joe Biden, the current U.S. President. Eh? Now, had that prophecy come to me in uh, 2019, I wouldn't have prophesied it. <laughs> because I know exactly who that man is. Eh? I know he doesn't follow the agenda of God. You know, So what the Lord did, you see, I, I, want, I, want, to, I want to show you how these things happen. Eh? So what the Lord did, he timed me back then in 2013. Gave me a prophetic word and uh, that prophetic word seemed like I was prophesying about the man's health. Eh? You remember that? You've watched it. Eh? And then uh, along the prophecy, now I'm talking about, uh, you know, when his health shall begin to show up, then you shall know <laughs> that there's a close of, an, of one chapter and a beginning of a new one. Eh? So this is a very obvious prophecy, uh, you know, referring to the presentation because that's the time when, the, you know, uh, who would have known that two terms later, two presidential terms later, that very man who, I was prof who, I, who then was the vice president would be running for the uh, presidency and then his, uh, you know, his health issues show up and then that would be a time when uh, the current administration, apparently the chapter would be closed. Now, he gives it to you, he, g he gave it to me in the form of uh, what, uh, you know, uh, the scripture would call the word of knowledge, you know, where you know something. You see, prophetic, prophetic revelations are given to us in various forms. Sometimes they come in trances, in, you know, which are really forms of visions, open visions, uh, you know. Uh, then if you, if you are not very ranking in the spirit, uh, especially in the prophetic realm, you will receive dreams, you know. Uh, so they come in different forms. Eh? So when they come, when prophetic revelations uh, come in the form of uh, knowledge, you get to know something and uh, without understanding it. So you get to know that this is exactly what is going to happen. Eh? And it's going to play out without actually understanding what you're saying. You know what is going to happen. You're not fully understanding it. And so when you start prophesying it, uh, all of a sudden, uh, all of a sudden when you start prophesying it, uh, you, you, if you, your mind can start, you know, wanting to understand what exactly you are prophesying. So eventually, uh, I laid it out as it ought to be laid out, and then come two presidential terms, U.S. presidential uh, terms later. This man is actually on the ballot. Uh, his health issues show up just about the same time, and then when that prophecy uh, comes out. Now I see some people around me and I start asking them, uh, you know, ah, 
this prophecy is concerning me, you know. Eh? This guy looks like he's going to be what? The, the, the next guy. So, ah, no, no, because what? You see, that actually means what? <laughs> I looked at them and I knew. Uh, of course, we all did not want him because uh, obviously he represents the ungodly side, you know, uh, the dark side. And then there was uh, Trump who re really was representing the side of the light, the side of the kingdom. Eh? Uh, so, we go through. Uh, you know that and I'm looking at this prophecy and I'm you know telling people around uh, you know there is something that is really really concerning me as far as uh, that prophecy is concerned and sure enough um, you know that prophecy comes to pass and I can see and uh, you know you know where you see something you don't want it to happen uh, but uh, you have prophesied it and you know it, it has to happen eh? that's, that's, that's the state in which I was in for all that time eh? so then it comes to pass and obviously um, I will even tell you later why things like that come to pass which are not exactly the will of God. Eh? Uh, I, I, you know, because uh, this, you know what is happening here? What we have called uh, this prophetic series, it's really a recovery. There's something new that has started. That has started. But you see, you've got to be positioned rightly. Eh? God has got to position us rightly for us to face these things head on that we never at any in the near future ever fall prey to the things that we have fallen prey to especially this one or two years uh, uh, back eh? so anyway so this happens and then uh, uh, you know obviously it is something bad and terrible eh? now it's more like uh, the Lord telling you you go and uh, prophesy to someone whom you do not like and prophesy a blessing to them. Eh? You'll go and tell them, uh, I had one prophet whom uh, the Lord told to go and uh, tell them, I think they were going to get some, uh, you know, uh, almost like a, a Lamborghini, like a blessing. Then he told them, uh, you know, uh, you're going to get some, some kind of Toyota, you know, something like that. <laughs> because you see, eh? they couldn't come away, you know, with uh, uh, the fact of, uh, because his feelings, his conditioning, came in the way of what uh, the Spirit of God actually wanted to do. And sometimes when that happens, because your feelings are short-sighted, if I may use that word, that word, because feelings actually can actually see as well, eh? your feelings are short-sighted, you know, your thoughts are short-sighted, you will think that God blessing someone who apparently is evil in your eyes is something that is terrible. But God is looking ahead and there's something that might happen because of that blessing. Eh? You see, eh? so you, you've, you've, when you are co being conditioned, the way God wants you to be conditioned, you will not let anything, anything, and that one I, I cannot overemphasize it, anything come in the way. And that is why you remember when the angel of the Lord came to, I think it was Joshua or Gideon, uh, Gideon I think, eh? And then uh, Gideon asks, the, uh, you know, the angel of the Lord, whose side are you on? <laughs> he wanted the angel to say, I'm on your side. Eh? The angel said, I'm on neither side. Eh? I'm on God's side. <laughs> the angel said, I'm on God's side. Now, in other words, if you're on God's side, then you'll find us together. You see? Eh? So this exactly is how the Lord has trained me to operate over the years eh? uh, in the prophetic. When I am ministering prophetically, I have totally, I am not conscious of anything. Not, I'm not conscious of uh, um, any, anything, anything, whether it be, you know, uh, politics, religion, uh, whatever it is, I am not conscious of uh, nationalities. I'm not conscious of anything. I'm conscious only on, uh, on, on God. And that's why, you see, some people, who, when they see us prophesying some things, eh, they think that uh, when we prophesy some things, we are actually biased against them. They don't realize that the reason as to why the prophecy comes out and seems biased uh, towards them, it is because they are on the wrong side of things. If they turned and they became friendly to the ministry or the office of the prophet, then they would receive prophecies that are friendly, you know, towards them. Eh? Because you see, all through the scriptures you will see this, eh, that if those who are on the prophet's side we are on God's side. And those who are not on God's side, we are not on the prophet's side as well. So the prophet seems to be, seem to be prophesying or is negative about them. And they, real, they didn't understand that it, this had nothing to do with personal issues. It wasn't personal. It was the revelation of God. So you see, 
God has got to bring us to a place of maturity where when we are prophesying, we are prophesying the revelation of God. And because we are prophesying the revelation of God, those who are on God's side are going to be edified. Those who are not on God's side will feel a sense of um, uh, destruction and, and, and judgment. But it's not because it is personal, it is because it is, uh, 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 it is really the word of the Lord. And so, and that's why there is, there is, uh, there is room for repentance. If, the, if you repent and you come on the side of the prophetic, then you're on the side of the Lord, and then you are covered by the very same thing that you thought was biased against you. But so you see, this is exactly uh, uh, what is so important in this day and age. I never allow to be cornered into any kind of conditioning and prejudices, whether it be all political, you know, some people, then I am, FDC, no, that's not me. That's not me. I'm a prophet of God. I speak the mind of God, you know. I speak the revelation of God as it comes to me. If you are on my side, you are on God's side. You can't claim to be on God's side and then somehow we are clashing. Because you see, I am the one who carries the mind of God. I carry the revelation of God. So you can't claim to be on God's side in some generic form. You know, have you heard from God? Has God ever sent you? Have you spoken his mind and then it has come to pass? That's, you see, that's the proof that's in the pudding. If you, if you claim to be on God's side, then he has spoken to you at some point, and then what he has spoken to you has come to pass. Eh? So if you want to know which side God is on, eh, go on the side of the one whom he speaks to. And if he speaks to that person, and that, all that person claims that he speaks to them, it has to come to pass. Eh? You see, eh? So it is purely simple as that. It, so I can state it this way in that context. If you're on God's side, you have nothing to fear. And you have nothing to be, you know, uh, you know, antagonistic about, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, the prophetic or the prophet or, or stuff like that, because you will automatically be on my side. Whatever I will speak will come out as an edification, as a source of light to you, because I am speaking the revelation of God, unadulterated as it comes to me. Glory to God. Eh? So now that is why we're just setting the stage. You see, uh, for what we are going to be entering into because it's going to be extremely important stuff. Extremely important things that are, uh, we have to hear and we have to hear very, very carefully and uh, you know, understand those things and position ourselves accordingly. You understand this? Eh? So now that is why what I am going to start revealing to you uh, not only this day but in the days that shall, uh, uh, that shall follow will, uh, you know, will be something that will help you to interpret your time rightly. Yeah? You see, the prophecies that I will share with you or that will come forth uh, either from the scriptures or from me are things that, again, you've got to tune in very, very reverently that you may not miss them. You have to be so careful to tap into the spirit of them not only the hearing of them but the spirit of those things eh? i want you to open to second peter chapter 1 verse 20 to show you what i am talking about eh? second peter chapter 1 verse 20 it says knowing this first that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation you don't make it to mean what you want to make it mean whether it is the prophecy of the scripture or prophetic revelation that comes from God yeah, through a prophet, it ought not to be made of any private interpretation. You can't, you can't treat prophecy that way. Uh, you, have to understand, you have to tap into the spirit of it if it is going to work for you. You see, what I'm trying to release here is the spirit of prophecy, eh? you know, because it's already here in our midst. Eh? So what I'm trying to get to release is, you see, the scripture says one shall put to flight a thousand to ten thousand. Eh? I want a a whole host of the remnant of God carrying the spirit of prophecy. You, know, you don't know how powerful the spirit of prophecy is once it is actually carried, eh? not privately interpreted or interpreted by your own self, eh? but actually you know you've tapped into the origin of it, the spirit of it, and then are flowing in the exactness of what it actually is intended to mean. Eh? Now, when you carry that, it is so impactful 
more impactful than an atomic bomb. It will explode and you know and everything that is is in its path will be put away once it is carried. I'm telling you. And so this because of knowing knowing the power of it that is why I am I feel this very very urgently to get you to understand it and then carry it because you see again like I said we are getting into a period of time where uh this you know like the children of Issachar uh spoken of in the scriptures I believe it's first chronicles chapter 12 verse 32 eh? Uh, it talks about the children of Issachar. It says, and of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times. It says, the children of Issachar that had understanding of, of the times. They had uh, another uh, translation of scripture talks about how they had, uh, they, 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 they understood how to discern the times. Now, in other words, according to them, eh, they they did not take whatever was being projected to them by the media and uh, authorities here and there on face value you see some people think that they understand what is going on because they have uh, had the perspective of apparently what is going on on the media now these people the, whom the uh, the lord refers to as the children of Issachar these were a prophetic group of people that did not go by. They never went by uh, the projections of the of the media. They discerned. Now, if if if, if you if you uh, people do not realize that uh, whatever is going on or apparently happens to be going on, the devil is it's just the devil's smoke screen. There's something else that needs to be discerned behind what is going on eh? now if you if you're the kind of person who merely uh goes by what apparently is going on and oh i understand that today uh, because of all this there's a there's an economic uh you know a lockdown there's all this lockdown and uh, you know the economies you know the trends of the economies are going down and all these things are happening if you're the kind of person who merely goes by uh, by that what is presented to you on face value you will not discern. You, see, you will not be like what the Lord is talking about here. He says, And of the children of Issachar, which were men that had understanding of the times, to know. In other words, they, they discerned the times to know what Israel ought to do. When you understand or discern the times, then you know what Israel, what the remnant of God ought to do. You see, now that is very, 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 very important. Eh? When you know, when you understand, when you discern the times, when you do not go by whatever is being projected at you by the media and social media and all these other things, but then you are the kind of person who, uh, you know, uh, takes a back and you discern what, is, what exactly is going on behind all these things that are being uh, projected eh, as, as, as the reality, then you will know what Israel ought to do. And this is exactly what we are going to get into. What do we need to do during times like this? Eh? What do we need to do? What do we need to do? It takes the understanding of the times to position us uh, rightly to know what we ought to do otherwise if we do not understand this we will not know what we need to do and we will go by whatever is being thrown at us eh? you get this eh? so now that is why it is so important so important to know what uh, i mean to have the the, the 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 discernment of the understanding of the times of the day i want us to go first to uh, a clip uh, while we enter into uh, while we enter into the uh, uh, the understanding of the times, uh, I want us to enter into a clip of uh, a prophecy that I prophesied uh, uh, back then in the year uh, 2018. That was a prophecy about uh, the year 2020, and uh, the Spirit of God gave it to me in such a very, very, very uh, clear way, and. Uh, 
I know that we have we are yet to actually uh, imbibe the spirit that it carries. Eh? So I want us to, uh, to we, we're just really setting the stage eh? to go through it um, uh, and watch the clip and see uh, what, how we're going to handle it. Eh? Play the clip. Eh? The certain things the Spirit of God was showing me last night. And then he told me to tell you to start preparing. To start preparing for the time which he has set. He said the forces of darkness have for so long intimidated his people. So much so that many of his people have found themselves subjects to the forces and authorities of darkness. Then he said, but my people who I have reserved, my people shall be an example to the church and to the world that my kingdom reigns supreme. You see, he started to show me certain things that would happen and decided to show me especially the year 2020 i know we are not yet in past January. <laughs> and I, I am not yet there i'm just sharing with you what he showed me and then he said you see i saw secrets secrets of the governments of this world and I saw them in unison working hand in hand behind the scenes trying to bring about things and the year 2020 was marked out when they wanted when they want all things in control to submit them to the God of this world and say now here is your world but then he said remember what the angel said to you he said that the people whom he has committed for these last days, speaking about you, he says, you shall be the dominant force. He said, you are the restraining power that is spoken of in 2 Thessalonians, the restraining power. And then he says that when salt loses its saltiness it's worthless but because of the salt and the light that you are and that you have maintained you are that restraining power and because you are that restraining power there is restlessness in the kingdom of darkness and they cannot pass anything just because of you they cannot they they, they just cannot run the world run the nation down into darkness just because of you. You see, they are wishing and praying that you didn't exist. Because you are that force that restrains evil from running rampant. You see, and he said, there are a number of nations and the church abroad that will begin to see the movement of the Spirit of God in our midst. How we arise and they will arise as well and realize and know that darkness does not have dominion over light. They will know this. Let me tell you, these last days are not days where children of God are hidden somewhere in closets. These are days actually where the greatest display of the dominion of his kingdom is going to be seen. I am talking about, I am talking about authorities tumbling over because they have touched the anointed of God. I know what I'm talking about. Hallelujah. <laughs> now that prophecy is so, so, so loaded. It's extremely loaded. I wonder sometimes when you're hearing it, whether you actually hear 
how loaded it is. It's extremely loaded with, uh, with a lot of revelation. But now you see, uh, I think let me first start with uh, one ele uh, an element of it that, is, uh, uh, that started to un unfold as well uh, in the year 2020 uh, when uh, uh, this whole uh, outbreak of the virus happened. Eh? Uh, you notice, unless you are really, really, really willfully blind, that uh, the governments of this world, as the prophecy talks about, uh, the governments of this world started to assume authority, unprecedented authority, as never before. Eh? Uh, uh, you know, what people say, you know, today in today's world, uh, you hear people talking about even the, what people call the free world talking about, oh, you know, our liberties have been infringed upon. The governments of this world assumed such authority, such control, you know, to take over and control almost all things. Actually, nearly all things. Eh? If, you can, if you can control worship, then you've really, really extended your control beyond control. Eh? So they literally assumed authority to control all things, as the prophecy say, says. Eh? Now, of course, with the help of, uh, of uh, the so-called, um, you know, uh, big tech, you know, uh, where, you know, uh, you would clearly see, again, unless you are willfully blind, or you really, really, really have a problem, eh? you know, you will see that there is a streamlined agenda, a streamlined narrative across the face of the earth, eh? Now, if, if, if you look at uh, the governments of this world, eh, you will see that this is something that is a streamlined agenda, streamlined narrative. So much so that even, uh, uh, you know, there is, uh, if you look at the so called again big tech, they have been given uh, uh, an agenda to literally um, curb, to literally, uh, you know, censor, uh, you know. Uh, any so-called misinformation. You know what that literally means? That means anything that is not really in their line of narrative. Eh? So it is, you know, it is deemed, you know, uh, you know, dangerous. It is deemed harmful. It is censored. It is uh, banned. It is, you know, such that there can be one narrative, and that one narrative uh, will suit one global agenda, and that's why you will see. You know, there's some things we have not spoken in public. Eh? but which we know. That's why you will see that there had to be a removal of all, of any leader who seemed to stand contrary to that agenda, to that streamlined agenda and that streamlined narrative. So you will see uh, the president of, uh, of uh, the former president of, uh, of Tanzania, uh, Magufuli, fell prey to it. And we're not going prophetic details about it, you know. Uh, uh, President Donald Trump uh, temporarily fell uh, prey to it, and I say temporarily fell uh, prey to it, um, uh, because you'd see that anyone who's not flowing along, anyone who's not flowing along, you know, had to be dealt with. Why? Because again, the narrative had to suit the agenda. You know, you why the, you know why the narrative should suit the agenda? Because you see, if you're trying to control people's behavior, you must control the narrative. Eh? Again, before people behave a certain way, before people conform towards a certain way, they've got to perceive that that way is the way to conform to. And for them to, in order, in order for them to perceive that that is the way to conform to, they've got to be given the information that will make them perceive that. So in other words, information leads to perception which leads to behavior or conformity. So now, anything that is standing in the way of, uh, uh, or that is not flowing according to the mainstream, what they now refer to as the mainstream, has got to be dealt with, has got to be centered, censored, has got to be termed as harmful, has got to be, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, caged that way, you know, eh? uh, because, you know, it is dangerous. And yes, indeed, it's dangerous, but dangerous to what? To the global agenda. And we shall get there. Eh? Uh, it's dangerous to one global agenda, and so it has got to be very vigorously and rigorously, you know, uh, targeted and uh, removed away because it's going to be 
harmful. They, this is where they term these things, misinformation. Do you know that what they are doing actually, they are, they are actually uh, 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 trading in misinformation out there. We can as well call, call it misinformation because they are in essence saying, they, they are in effect saying, Jesus does not heal. That's misinformation as far as we are concerned. They are saying that what? That, uh, you know, uh, uh, that, uh, you know, when you touch something contagious, that you will get it. Now, Jesus touched the leper in Mark chapter 1, and then uh, he healed, I think it's in verse 42, and then got them. He didn't touch them, he didn't flee away from them. And then he said, the works that you do, will I do also? Uh, I mean, the works that I do, will you do also, and greater works than these? Eh? Shall you do? He says, and as soon as he had spoken immediately, the leprosy, eh? verse, verse 40, verse 40. And there came a leper uh, uh, to him, beseeching him, and kneeling down to him, and saying unto him, if thou will, you can make me clean, verse 41. And Jesus, with compassion, put forth his hand and touched him. Now, this was unheard of eh? in the days of uh, uh, the Old Testament. And here, Jesus was actually living in the Old Testament. The New Testament does not begin where your Bible says that the New Testament, you know, eh? the New Testament begins after the blood covenant, eh? after he raises and he takes whatever, the sprinkling of the blood. And this, actually, this is the blood of my covenant. But before he actually sheds it, it's the Old Testament. So Jesus actually came as an Old Testament prophet and obviously a son of God, eh? but he, he defied this and he touched, and then the leprosy was clean. Eh? Now, in olden days, in those days, you had to flee away. Now, this is, this is scripture, this is the faith, but now they are telling, they are telling us that this is misinformation. And that's, that's exactly what we, you know, uh, 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 what we are dealing with now. Eh? You're either on this side or this side, you see, eh? you're either preaching the word or not preaching it, eh? and that's really the divide that is actually taking place. Eh? Uh, so, uh, uh, anyway, so you see that those who, uh, there has to be one agenda and those who do not flow according to the agenda, wherever it's coming from, whoever is handing it down and we shall get there, you know, uh, uh, has given them one agenda into a certain world order that he wants. Eh? And so you've got to follow it. And if you're not following, uh, uh, you know, it, then you are, you are, you are, you're deemed dangerous to society, harmful to society. I'm telling you that if it were not for the Holy Spirit and the remnant of God, we would get to a place where the preaching of the scripture would actually be criminal. Because the preaching of the scripture does not, it will contradict most of the things that you're seeing in this world order, the world order that is actually being reset. You know, the words are different. Eh? They, they try to coin different words. Eh? When they realize that uh, you're so scared of the word New World Order, they would say Great Reset. They would say New Normal. <laughs> but so literally, speak about the same thing, eh? you see. Eh? So, anyway, what I was saying is, so the leaders that were not uh, in somehow, somewhere, with uh, uh, the World Order that was being uh, constructed and structured had to be and have to be taken out of the way. And so we saw Trump, and so we see this, 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 this somewhere, I believe we shall see it at some point, eh? where, uh, you know, those, those um, uh, uh, ponies of, the, of, of that system, um, guys like George Soros are speaking about how, you know, uh, Trump is a problem, but we shall take him out, you know, things like that. Eh? So we're really not speaking conspiracy, we're speaking things that are actually factual. They had to be taken away. They have to be taken away. But you see, God always reserves unto himself a remnant. Not long ago, I think it was about two or three days ago, I saw a, a, I saw a clip somewhere. I'll have to uh, see and see how factual or uh, real it is. I believe it was in the, reported in the monitor about, uh, I, I mean, that's where I saw it, eh? uh, the current Zambian president uh, apparently lifting all uh, restrictions. Eh? You know, the current Zambian president is actually born again. Eh? Uh, so you're going to see not only leaders who are born again, because you see, there's claiming that you're born again, but you, who are you serving? You know, that's where the, 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 the test of the pudding is, is who are you serving? Because there's a clear agenda in the world today. So you're either on this side, on the side of God, you know, or you're on the side of that agenda. Eh? It's, it's becoming more apparently obvious, eh? So uh, you will find those that reserve themselves, eh, that are reserved eh, for, uh, you know, uh, and, and come out. And of course, 
the tide will tend to go against them, but that only can only succeed as long as the remnant army remains silent and is not activated, which we are doing right now. Eh? Uh, that uh, uh, the time which we are going into, every leader that shall be on God's side, we shall cover, not with words, with power. And I want people to hear me very well. Eh? Every leader on all levels, on all fronts, whether it be in the church, whether it be in the you know, uh, industry, edu education industry, um, uh, you know, entertainment industry, music industry, political world, uh, you know, uh, parliament level, executive level, judicial level, level, every leader that shall stand on our side, on the side of God, shall be covered, preserved, protected. Those that shall not, they shall spell their own doom. And that's how it really is. Eh? It's, it's the, the power of God is being displayed, is being manifested. Eh? Uh, that's how it really is going to be uh, in this day and age. Eh? So you see that while this agenda is streaming down, people, there's a group of leaders that have to, have to, uh, you know, that have been uh, 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 crafted to follow, you know, that same global agenda. And it is very clear. I want you to play one, uh, one of these clips that uh, shows them, uh, uh, some of these global leaders uh, speaking some build back better mantra. Eh? <laughs> Plate. Let's How do we build back better? Build back better or whatever. And build back better. To build back better. Build back better. Building back better. To build back better. Build it back better. Build it back better. It's about building this country back better. Build back better. Building back better. Build back better. To build back back better. Is my plan to build back better? <laughs> no. Where do you think these guys, all these guys got that mantra from? First of all, they are not from the same state. How come in that very year, all of them came up with a one mantra that they are all parroting? Build back better, build back better. Build. Where do you think they came up with that from? And you see, you know, some, of, some people who are very you know, casual at looking at uh, life, like will easily dismiss, oh, cons conspiracy, conspiracy, conspiracy. You know, where do you think? Where do you think all these leaders from different countries, different caliber, uh, from different industries, politicians, some apparently are climate uh, leaders, others are, you know, ex-presidents, you know, all of them come up with one mantra, build back better, build back better. We are going to build back, Where do, which meeting did they sit in? Did, was, they, was it telecasted? Which meeting they sit in where they said, okay, now let's start an agenda of building back better. Why the timing also? Why do you think they happen to time this time, this season, for them to apparently build back better? You see, all these things, all these things, if you just casually go through them, you will really miss out on what actually is happening here. Now, I know where they got it from. You see it? I know the meeting that they sat in, eh? and that meeting is uh, a meeting between the spirit realm and the earth realm. Eh? The earth realm has its represent representatives, the spirit realm. <laughs> you see, it is becoming clearer and clearer by the day that uh, whatever happens on this earth realm is really influenced by the spirit realm, entities from the spirit realm. The agenda comes from uh, beyond, and then it is transferred down eh, to the earth realm. And that is why you need to understand that there are different hierarchies of influence, hierarchies, different levels of leadership, or levels of hierarchies. You know, uh, first starting from the uh, earthly realm, the hierarchies that go and go, go higher and higher. There are people, for instance, uh, in leadership that serve a particular po political party, but they are so low in the ranking that they cannot interact with the lead of that party. Eh? This is, uh, you, you know that as far as the, uh, this natural 
earthly realm is concerned eh? that they, you may belong to the same party political party but because of your ranking uh, as far as uh, uh, hierarchy is concerned in your party you do not or you cannot interact directly and so whatever is is discussed is discussed by people of a certain rank or hierarchy and they just hand it down here and for you you just you are just there to carry out uh, the master's agenda or command or order and so this hierarchy transcends the earthly realm into the spirit realm this i'm talking about this hierarchy of, of leadership and influence eh? so you will see it it going up 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 upon the earth and then it now transcends the earth realm and it heads up into one entity one individual in the spirit realm whom jesus referred to as the prince of this world remember jesus at one point said uh, the prince of this world has come but he has no part in me he called him the prince of this world now this prince of this world is an invisible entity that actually interacts with those of a certain order of a certain level of a certain hierarchy on the earth and we know some of those people that do that eh? so some of the leaders down here just receive okay now let's start building back better oh then you even see an african leader <laughs> will get one of those scripts come and say build back better and they don't know why they are saying these things so some people serve the devil directly some serve the devil indirectly but whether it is direct or indirect you're serving the devil you see eh? and so people don't know these things they have no clue about these things and because of that uh the you know they find themselves in trouble they don't know about the agenda they find themselves in trouble now we're here as prophets to bring light and revelation and order the order of the kingdom of god back to this earth eh? so you see now without going again in the depth of uh uh again we're just introducing here some of these things here i'll tell you some of the visions the lord has given to me some of the revelations he has given to me and uh, what we ought to do and i'll tell you when some of them are going to die i'm talking about the top ranking in the world because there are two that are going to bring joy to the world eh? um there are two who shall be taken out as we are carrying this out eh? so i've seen a lot of things as far as uh the things that i'm sharing with you today i'm just trying to introduce some of these things to you so anyway so what uh is happening here is uh these build back better people or leaders are merely employed by the prince of this world the prince of darkness himself and they're employed to condition or to structure a new world order which will serve the devil which will serve him in a way that he only uh, 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 can serve eh? and that is why everything is tending towards authoritarianism you see the bible says where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty whenever you see personal liberties and what being like taken away just know that's the spirit of the antichrist eh? so he's building constructing him he has employed all these build back better people to construct a system that is going to ultimately uh, be fashioned well eh, to serve him he can't serve uh, the antichrist can't manifest and serve in a world that has certain liberties left here and there eh? you know people enjoying some liberties you know it doesn't happen like that you know the antichrist and liberty don't go hand in hand eh? it's either you know uh, uh, he manifests you know uh, through an authoritarian controlling system or he doesn't mind because he can't manifest at all and i'll show you how that is the only reason that will cause the manifestation or the revelation of the antichrist when there is total authoritarian control where there are no personal liberties whether it's in finances where you are just digital you can just switch you off is that who's controlling you if you tow the line then somehow your finances remain there but you also don't own them you will own nothing and you'll be happy you know things like that he's he has to create he has to structure a world where everything is in total jeopardy absolute darkness no freedoms you know lockdowns stuff like that that is his world eh? 
so where you know people can can just raise up and say, okay, now all of you, you know, taken off, you know, uh, we'll get into that. Eh? So that is the world where these leaders, which really is the new world order. Again, like I said, it's disguised in so many words. Eh? Uh, some have called it, uh, you know, because they know that that world, the new world order, has been ringing around for uh, a couple of years, and so people go get uh, get alarmed or uh, get uh, a bit conscious when they hear it. So now he crafts new words here and there. But if you if you, if you really hear those words, they literally mean the same things. Eh? The new normal, new world, the new world order. Really, uh, great reset, resetting what? Why why would you need to reset it? All just new world order stuff. Eh? Let us play a clip, a mainstream clip. I may add. Eh? from Tucker Carlson uh, to show you an example of this. Eh? We will be looking at what contact tracing looks like in the new world order. And yes, it will be pubs and clubs and other things if we have a positive case there. <laughs> the new world order. She said it out loud. <laughs> How you see it? See, here is something, it, 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 can't, it apparently seemed like it actually even skipped. It says it's a skipped. She let the cat out of the bag, eh? the way the phrase is. Eh? It, she didn't need to say it. You see, they know exactly what they're doing. They can't actually say it. But in this particular moment, or some moments here and there, you'll find that it will escape out of it. They know exactly what they're doing. Play that clip again and we see it. We will be looking at what contact tracing looks like in the new world order. And yes, it will be pubs and clubs and other things if we have a positive case there. <laughs> the new world order. She said it out loud. <laughs> so now you see it. Eh? Now exactly, this is this is this is what you tell people. Eh? That he, you know, you can't believe that she actually said it. This this is mainstream news. We're not talking about fringe news. This is Fox News. This is mainstream uh, news reporting it. Now she's here giving details about how uh, the plans that they have for 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 people. We can't count ourselves among this. The plans that have people and said. In this new world order, for them, they think it's actually really being really good. So in this new world order, now imagine if one of, the, one of our ministers, one of our leaders came uh, uh, around, let's say in some of these national addresses and said, now in the new world order, <laughs> you see, you see eh? we're in the new world order, we're in the new world order. <laughs> but that's exactly, that's exactly, that has exactly been the agenda all along, the new world order. They want a new world order. Something we have known for a while right now. Eh? It only escapes out of them here and there, but it's actually the thing. Eh? So people think sometimes, you know, oh, it's about your safety. It's about what? It's about... There's, there's an agenda beyond all that. And that is why, again, like we said before, they have to, they have to curtail anything that is contrary to the narrative because it's a danger and harmful to this eh? because they want to railroad everyone into this new world order of things. What is that new world order? It's a world that basically personal freedoms are taken away. Taken away, there will be no more ambitions because you're all socialists, you're all communists, you know? You will own nothing and be happy. It's really basically that kind of world where, uh, you know, you are literally subdued and you are towing the line. And if you don't tow the line, you're taken out. It's basically that kind of order, that kind of world uh, that uh, they are trying to construct. Thank God it will not succeed. Eh? So we're hearing that, but we thank God it is, it's, uh, you know, we are here. Eh? <laughs> you get eh? So that is basically it. Eh? But now you see, eh? this is why it's extremely important, extremely important for us to be alert, for us to be on the lookout, and for us to discern the times, to be able to know what to do. To know what to do. And I, I pray you're just, you're not just hearing me. I pray you're in tune. I know we're just introducing, but I want you to really be in tune to where we are going. We go as an army, raised by God, with the word as a sword in our mouth with fire that is emanating from us, destroying anything that touches us. You remember in a part of that prophecy, it talks about how what, uh, you know, uh, the church. Then it talks about how, you know, uh, they will know that touch not my anointed. 
and do my prophets no harm. And this is exactly the power that we have now. Touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Something hits them and they don't know what has hit them. It continues to hit them and hit them and they don't know what is happening. Our war is spiritual. Our battle is spiritual. It is so powerful. And so you see, uh, for, but for that to happen, there's, an, uh, uh, there's a part that I would have us look at in conclusion for today about uh, uh, the aspect of the, of the church. The aspect of the church in isolation. Eh? And uh, that was also in the prophecy that in, in 2018 uh, prophecy. And talks about how, you know, these are not uh, times where the church uh, shall go into isolation. And you notice uh, when you listen to that aspect of, of the prophetic revelation, it first it talks about how, uh, you know, uh, 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 times of the midst. It's really very rich. So, so many things which I can't get into right now. But I want, there's, there's one particular thing that I want us to look at eh, that is so important in that aspect. Uh, or that element of the prophet of the prophecy where the scripture refers to us as the restraining power the restraining power you see how prophecy is so awesome and wonderful eh? back then in 2018 prophesying about 20 saying but you are the restraining power now that is it means it is true we actually are the restraining power the uh, new king james version refers to it as a uh, uh, the, uh, we are the withholding power. Another translation calls it the restraining power. Restraining power. But again, it says, first, first go to 2 Thessalonians, because that's what the prophet says. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, from verse 2. Eh? It says, that you be not soon shaken. No, start from verse 1. Eh? It says, now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not shaken in mind, are you getting the spirit of it, eh? or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us, eh? as that day of Christ is at hand. Then he says, let no man deceive you by any means. Then he says, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. So there's this that he refers to as a falling away. So he says, the day of the Lord shall not come unless we first witness a falling away. Now that one we are seeing it literally here. We are seeing a church that has fallen away. It's on the side of the world. It is following the agenda of the world. It is believing the narrative of the world. It is not a prophetic church. It has fallen away. You see, we are actually seeing that. We want to reverse it because it can be reversed. Eh? We will see how. Eh? So he says that day shall not come except there be a falling away first. And then he says, and that man of sin be revealed. The son of perdition. Now this is important. Eh? He says that us being caught up, caught up together with the Lord in, uh, in an effect that has been uh, referred to as, that we know to be, we have called the rapture. He says that day cannot come, in other words, we cannot be raptured until we first witness the falling away and also we see the Antichrist, the Bible calls the man of sin, eh? be revealed. The son of perdition. Now, so people will say, okay, now, do you want to tell me that we are going to see the son, the son of perdition, the Antichrist, revealed before Jesus comes? <laughs> now, first relax. Yeah? <laughs> Some people don't want to be in the world where he has now showed up. Eh? It, it, I don't know whether I should preempt some of these things. Eh? The coming of the Lord is at hand. I know it for a fact. Eh? And I don't know it because of, uh, 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 you know, uh, um, after 2020. I know it prior to 2020 and I know certain things. Eh? And I don't, I, and so with the day and time, I will not go into a lot of that. Eh? I'm, I'm just trying to tell you, take to you step by step and to show you eh, how, uh, uh, you know, 
you are of much use and there's a lot that you you have god is counting on you to do and for you also for your personal we'll get there so he says here he doesn't it's not necessarily that this man of sin eh, will be all this antichrist will be revealed directly or should be revealed directly to the whole world eh? it's not necessarily that eh? and i'll show you how but however if unless you you really 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 are so blind eh? you will know that is somewhere on the wings waiting <laughs> you know it's not that uh, he will be born like in 2030 if i may say that eh? we'll get there and that the man of sin be revealed the son of perdition eh? verse 4 who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called god now in other words this guy just as his spirit you know the spirit of the antichrist has already been in manifestation and in operation eh? but he's saying that uh, uh, just in the same uh, the spirit just in the same way in the which it operates opposing everything that is called god you know all everything that is worshiped now in other words this is the spirit that we are having a, a, a four test here and here where it is uh, canceling worship canceling gatherings you know canceling every you know the worship of god to, towards the worship of science science before god you know those kinds of things that is the spirit of the antichrist so it's now the antichrist will be the very embodiment of that spirit eh? anyway verse 4 says who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called god all that is worshiped so that he as god sitteth in the temple of god showing himself that he is god we'll get to that eh? but there's a, a precursor to this eh? verse 5 remember ye not that when i was with you on zoe grounds <laughs> I told you these things, this Paul, eh, who was now not physically with them, eh, but he says, remember you not, that when I was with you physically, I told you these things, eh, verse 6, and now you know what restrains or withholds that he might be revealed in his time. Do you get what is happening here? Now some of you don't really understand this. Eh? If he is given his way. This is what he's talking about. He can show up now. He wants to show up now. He wants to show up yesterday. But what is happening here is that there is a force that stops him from showing up. There is a force that restrains him from showing up. Now in other words, you think that he's waiting and saying, huh, maybe let me wait until 2030. No, he's battling to, to show himself. You think all these things that are happening all over the world, all these structuring and conditioning, all those things are intended to, to bring about a world that is conducive for his manifestation. Now let me show you how that has been achieved to an extent. Eh? It says, now you know what withholds that he might be, in other words, restrains him from manifesting. What about if that which that which withholds or, mani or, or restrains him from, from manifesting is taken away is taken away or removed from the way then you will manifest and that is why on top of all you know for safety reasons safety reasons on top of all that that is presented and projected the elimination of the church and taking it away at least temporarily such that our worship is considered non-essential is a means with which he will bring about a world that is a bit conducive for his spirit to manifest when the church is fully vibrant and is in complete operation he cannot when the operation of the church is curtailed, then he can have his way. Do you think all these things that are taking place in the world, even with uh, the large segment of the church that is weak, if it was allowed to continue gathering, you know some of these gatherings seem so weak, 
but to the kingdom of darkness, they're actually so powerful. Even some of these places that seem really, really, really kindergarten, eh? if they were, uh, you know, in the spirit I'm talking about, eh? you know, if they were just, you know, if worship was going on as it used to take, uh, go on, the extent of evil would not have happened the way it has happened. But what happens is, he deals away temporarily, at least we know it is temporarily, eh? uh, uh, because he ob obviously wants to do it permanently, but uh, for now he knows he can't, so he at least temporarily tries to curtail the operation of the, of the church such that evil can run rampant. There's, 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 there's a, a mysterious spiritual force that is in the air always when the church is in operation. And that is why in countries where the spirit of the Antichrist is so manifest up there, the first thing to deal away with is free worship. You have to curtail it, you have to curtail its operation, and then the order of darkness can increase, and then all these laws, weird laws that are suppressive and oppressive are passed and what. You've got to do something about the church. You've got to do something, you have to demean it, downgrade it, and then let the spirit of darkness to operate. So this is, this, is, uh, 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 this is a precursor to what he wants. He says, and you know what withholdeth or what restrains that he might be healed. And you remember in the prophecy, again, uh, uh, the spirit said, you are the restraining power. You are he that withholds, in other words, that restrains him. He says, they wish and pray. You remember in the prof prophecy, they wish and pray that you are taken out of the way. There was the prophecy. And that is what they wish to say, now this guy is here. Now they are tampering with, you know, with uh, some of our platforms of social media, you know, because again, they know <laughs> that as long as we are active with the fire of the Lord, eh, that it just is, disorganizes them. You do not know when we came on like that, the forces of darkness that took leave first in the second heaven and said, let's first wait for these hours to first cut, then we can come back and sit on the round table with you. They can't. They just can't. When we're in full force, they can't. But now the danger is also, the prophecy said that, you know, also part of the element of the prophecy said that if salt loses its saltiness, it's worthless. Eh? Now it's no longer, in other words, the restraining power. So people wonder, eh? people ask themselves, eh? uh, can, and this is something that I want you to hear very, as we close today, uh, you know, can the revelation of the Antichrist happen faster than it has been intended to? And the answer is yes. Eh? Because if he that restrained us ceases to restrain, then these things manifest. The way the whole church, not the whole church, a large segment of it has been compromised. Eh? The way it has been on the... As long as it takes you on the side of, oh, common sense, common sense, oh, common sense, these people are fanatic common sense, then is, you've lost your saltiness, you've lost your restraining power, and once you cease from, once the church... Once the remnant, but thank God for the I know you guys are strong. Eh? In fact, I can never, uh, that one I know it about the remnant of God, eh? can never lose the saltiness. Eh? You are a remnant, you are a remnant, that one, we know it. Eh? We are just trying to help the rest. Eh? But once the restraining power ceases to restrain, then the revelation of this guy comes faster, then the coming, coming of the Lord zoo so fast, and you know. <laughs> The Lord told me this about two weeks ago, after, uh, after the, last time I, uh, the last time I talked about uh, uh, some things that would happen in 2025, 2024, about that time. So I was, uh, I was with the Lord, and the Lord told me that, do you know that uh, you can delay that from happening? And then I said, okay. okay. And then he started uh, showing me how. Eh? and all this restraining uh, uh, power revelation, and he started, you know, revealing to me actually how. Those guys are counting on the fact that uh, they will curtail on worship, they will uh, corner us on social media, put us underground, and so they can make evil materialize so fast, 
and so the man of sin, or the, what the Bible calls the son of perdition, shall be revealed so fast. That's what they're counting on for them to then think that, oh, okay, then in 25, then the, those things in the skies shall begin now to have their way down. And So they have planned out a course of, uh, of, 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 uh, of, 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 of manifestation, you know, a course of action to happen on this earth for them to, be, to get ready or get set for what... Uh, 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 for the manifestation of their king, of their lord, who is the prince of darkness. They have laid it down. They are counting on the fact that the church will remain quiet or will just surrender and give in to whatever they will do. Now, they do not realize, of course they do it, but the devil had, is always stupid. Eh? Uh, you remember his uh, scripture says, had they known eh? They would not have crucified the Lord of glory. So they are repeating basically the same thing that they did back then. He says, whom the princes of this world did not know. He said, for had they known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. So they don't realize that what they are doing is just gathering a remnant of God and getting them set with the fire of God to start rolling out something that will not only flow out, in, in revelation, in manifestation, but in fire and in power. And it will spread across. And then, for those of you who think also, do we still have time? Yes, we actually do. In that context. <laughs> if that context wasn't there, I would give you a period which would shock you. But let's first go to verse 7. Eh? Verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity does already work. Eh? This is what I was telling you, eh? that the spirit of the Antichrist is already at work. Eh? Only he who let it, will let. Until he be taken out of the way, you get it, eh? you know, until we're taken out of the way. Uh, 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 you know, it says it's, it's already in, in operation, it's already working, until we're taken out, out of the way. And then shall the wicked, shall that wicked be revealed. Then he says, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Hallelujah. So today, you're just going to allow me to stop here. Uh, get that. Get your heart ready. Get your spirit ready. Just attune yourself to these words. I am going to show you. There's going to be signs even within these weeks and these days as it's happening. Let us flow in the spirit of prophecy. Watch and see the power of the Lord. Just watch and see the power of the Lord. You're going to be edified. You're going to be built up. You're going to be put back on course and established. And let me tell you, and assure you one thing, darkness has been already defeated. You're going to take up the seat that had been occupied by the heathen. I'm telling you this. The time has come for that to manifest in your life. Eh? So now, what, what is going to happen between now and then? We're going, to we're going to show you, not only show you, but we're going to send forth that power that shall shake things and shake things and shake things until everything has been totally reversed, until you have such brightness and you shall arise with the, that same brightness that the Lord is speaking upon you. Now, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name that is above every name, glory is upon you. Glory is upon you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Like the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of the Lord that comes forth from my mouth. In the name of Jesus, I command darkness. Every manner of darkness, every oppression that has come upon the children of God that has come upon this world, in the name of Jesus, I cut it off. I root it out. I dismantle it in the name of Jesus. Totally dismantle it. Now I declare and decree as one who sits in the office of the prophet that you are seeing days of liberty back first here in Uganda and then all over the world wherever you are. Every place, every nation, every country, every continent, darkness is being reversed away dealt our with. Liberty is coming fast in the name of Jesus. It's spreading so fast that no man shall be able to stand in its way 
Whoever stands in this way shall be taken down by the power from the Most High. Actually, is being taken down now in the name of Jesus. Now, Father, we thank you that you bring liberty, liberty to all. You bring recreation, reconstruction, re-establishment in a much better light, much better glory. Every one of you who has been affected one way or another, in the name of Jesus, may you, may you start to see good days from now, days of fruitfulness than ever before from now, in the name of Jesus, it is done. Glory to God. Glory, hallelujah. Praise the name of the living Lord. I want to thank Prophet Elvis Mbonye for that very special ministration and ushering us into the heavenly places. Now you know that where we have been launched, there is an assurance and there is a sealing and a preservation. Right now you're going to take your general offering and your prophetic offering in full recognition of this which has been released and to the Lord. We are in celebration, we are in full awe of what the Lord is doing. And on your screens, the numbers are being displayed where you're going to give. Today, I want you to know that your giving is different, is special. There is a new season, there is a new timing. And because of this, even your giving is unique, it is peculiar, it's in full celebration of the manifestation of the blessing of the Lord. And right now, you're going to take your general offering and a prophetic offering and present it unto the Lord. Wherever you're watching us from, remember that you have this grand opportunity to present this offering from the different nations. Determine, and in this special season, I want you to determine in your heart that you're going to be specially packaging. Determine in your heart. The Bible says that the Lord blesses that has been determined from the heart that actually in this season, you're going to specially connect with your giving. You're going to specially connect with your offering. You know very well that which the prophet is releasing to us in this special season and you're in full awe, so you're giving it in full awe, in full celebration of what, is, of what has been released here. This is your life, this is your testimony, you're getting to see it, you're getting to see it manifested from every area of your life as the prophet has, been, has released it. So make sure you prepare, specially package your general and prophetic offering and present it unto the Lord. The doors have been flung open and there is no limit to what you can get. There is something in store for the overcomers. He says to him, will I give power? Power. Hallelujah. The vessel through whom God has opened to us, this port prophet Elvis Mbonye has been proven through countless signs and prophetic fulfillments that by partnering with this great prophet, Prophet Elvis Mbonye, you are entering into a life where everything is not only possible, but limitless. To become an heir of gold, visit our website at www.prophetelvis.com slash heirs of gold. an honor to be in the presence of God and that was such a beautiful session with Prophet Elvis Mbonye we are indeed updated, we know where we are supposed to be, now I know that has blessed, you, uh, has blessed you and now you can as well send us your testimony if you have any testimony to testimony at prophetelvis.com prophet because we know that the Lord always blesses us and because the anointing that Prophet Elvis Mbonye carries we know that indeed it has points, it has fruits it preserves, it does so many things. So please, please, please don't forget to send us your testimony. Now, thank you so much for also watching. For all those that have been watching for the very first time, a warm welcome once again, even if we've come to an end. It is such a beautiful moment for all of us to still share in this place and for all of us to also understand that the Lord was in this place. That whatever has been said is for us to understand where the church of God is now. Please don't forget to follow Prophet Elvis Mbonye on all his social media platforms. Hit the notification button for you to know when he posts or when he's going live because you might not know he always has surprises for us and we love being in the presence of God with Prophet Elvis Mbonye. Thank you so much. We love you so much and God bless.